All right, Steeler fans, welcome to the mailbag segment. And I've decided that I'm going to make this mailbag segment sponsored by Oklahoma Joe's. You know, Oklahoma Joe's is doing right by me, thanks to the Ride or Die crew. So since I do this for the Ride or Die crew, Oklahoma Joe's even said that they created a discount code for me and you, the fans. So if you're ever interested in any Oklahoma Joe's grilling supplies, whether it's a new grill, a smoker, uh, anything, the only thing that they're not going to give this 10% discount for is their Tahoma grill, which is a very expensive grill. Uh, you can use Ride or Die 10. Ride or Die 10 to save yourself 10% off anything site-wide except for the Tahoma. So if you're interested in a really good grill, and I had someone ask me on Twitter, they said, Jeff, what's the difference between these other brands and Oklahoma Joe's? I am an old school grill guy. I don't use propane. Okay. I use charcoal or wood every time I, I cook, every time I use that to cook. And I, that's, that's just my primary. So you do not get a better flavor. And then also with the smoke that I'm going to use, it's not an electric smoker. The smoker that I ordered is an old school wood fed or charcoal fed smoker. I just like to do that stuff. It's, it makes me feel like I'm actually cooking for my family and not just turning a knob and then just throwing crap on a grill. These grills and these smokers are built to last. They are tough. They are heavy duty. They are rugged. That's what I love about Oklahoma Jets. So There you go. Let's get this mailbag underway in case you don't know. Every Tuesday I put out a tweet. You can find me on Twitter at jhartman, H-A-R-T-M-A-N underscore P-I-T. All you have to do is respond to that tweet. You don't have to follow me, and I will answer it. So let's get this started with Jeff Coons. He says, good morning, Jeff. We've heard plenty of ideas regarding the Steelers' early draft intentions. What position of need seems to be less on their radar but needs to be given greater attention? I'm going to say this until I'm blue in the face. It is defensive line. I think that everyone's going to say, well, they have Larry Ogunjobi and Keanu Benton. I like Keanu Benton a lot. Cam Hayward, at his age, you can't bank on him being able to play maximum numbers of snaps for 17 games for 18 weeks if they make the postseason. You just can't rely on that anymore. You need to replenish the well. Montravius Adams, he's a great dude. Not a bad player. Doesn't move the needle for me. I want to see him get the defensive line healthy, younger. That's what I want, and that's something not a lot of people are talking about. Let's go to Randy Fern, one of the main guys that got me the Oklahoma Joe's connection. He said, hey, Jeff, first time actually writing in the mailbag, but have been listening to you and the team for a long time. What are your thoughts on Nick Wright saying the Steelers team has no weapons? Every team has a Jalen Warren. I know it's just to generate buzz, but come on, man. Okay, so I did see some of this. I didn't hear his actual spiel. And that's anyone that listens to my podcast know that I don't like to go off of hearsay or just reading the quotes. I want to hear it. I didn't get a chance to, but I would say that I could I, I could say that they've lost weapons, but I've also could say that they've gained weapons. Russell Wilson is a greater weapon than Kenny Pickett was. Justin Fields is a greater weapon than Kenny Pickett was. And a weapon to me, just shows potential. It just shows what they are capable of. Russell Wilson has won a Super Bowl. He's been to two. Justin Fields could be used as a slash type role, especially as a running back. And that's something that Kenny Pickett could not do. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about weapons. Now you lose Deontay Johnson, but I think George Pickens is still a weapon. I think that Arthur Smith orchestrating an offense is going to make Pat Fryermuth more of a weapon. I also think Arthur Smith's offense being orchestrated is going to make Najee Harris and Jalen Warren even more of a weapon than they already were, where both had over 1,000 yards total last year. So, in other words, don't listen to Nick Wright. <laughs> All right, let's go with Tank. He asks a lot of questions. Let's get a couple here. Congrats on the Oklahoma Joes. So, uh, let's work on grilling with Jeff and Muth. Oh, there you go. I'll have to have Pat Fryermuth over. Uh, if he's in the Maryland area, I'd love to have him over. I'll grill, grill him whatever he wants, even fillets. It's expensive, but it's worth it. Let's go to the next one. The Steelers will be in D.C., Maryland this year. What would it take to get the triumphant trio to go for the game and broadcast from the stands? P.S. My son went to Latrobe last year. This tease, it's a, this time it's an actual game. That's cool. So, I've been to FedEx Field, which is where the Washington Commanders still play. I don't think it's called FedEx Field anymore. I think FedEx dropped their name from the naming rights. So whatever they're going to call that stadium, it is a nightmare. 
That it, that place is a nightmare to get in and out of. There is one way in and one way out. And so you can imagine a stadium that holds over 90,000 people, it's going to be chaotic getting in and out of that place. I really have no interest in going there, but uh, I'm not going to say, never say never, right? Last one from Tank. Draft question. Has there been a decision on the draft show this year? And when the Steelers trade up to 17 for their pick, would you be upset? First, let's answer the second part first. If they trade to 17 like they did last year, trading up to 14, I'm not going to be upset. I'm expecting some trades from Omar Khan this year. Uh, also, the draft show, I think we're going to do a draft show. I, I'm, I'm looking into potentially doing a draft show, which is kind of like an invite draft show where it's free, but you have to just get, we'll send out a link. You have to fill out the email and then we'll send you a link and you can actually watch it with us. And uh, I got to look into that a little bit, but I'll get back to you. If not, we'll probably live stream our draft show, which we'll have several of our people talking during the draft, giving our thoughts, comments. I always say what the pick is well before it is on the TV. So if you don't like that, you don't want to, you don't want to tune in. All right, let's go to Brian Haynes. He said, are you more comfortable going into this draft season than you were last draft season? If I'm being honest, last draft season, I, season, I was more comfortable. The Steelers didn't have gaping holes on their roster going into the draft last year. You could say, well, Jeff, they didn't have a slot cornerback. Ah, okay. All right, I get it. I get it. But they did have Levi Wallace and Patrick Peterson, which if you had to, you could. You're not going to be successful, but you could go into a season with that those two. The center thing is, is different. This is different altogether. So I'd have to say last year. All right, Heath Davis asked a bunch of questions, and let me see if I can find them all here. Oh, I found another one from Brian. Let me get to that one first. Would you trade 20 for Ayuk? I did a mock, and that was the offer, so I was curious on your opinion. I, I don't want to trade away my first-round draft pick. The Steelers need that pick. And Brandon Ayuk, the one kicker for me, is that he's going to need a new deal. So it's not just going to be, oh, you get Brandon Ayuk, congratulations. It's you get Brandon Ayuk, what are you giving up? And you got to pay the dude handsomely afterwards. So that's the big kicker for me is that it's not like you're picking up a contract. Everyone thought that the Houston Texans getting Stefan Diggs was a huge get for them until they found out that they don't get the three-year extension that he signed. What they're getting is a one-year rental. And then he's going to look for a new place. Maybe it is Houston, but he's going to have to get paid handsomely to stay. So that's interesting. Uh, so there you go. Let's go back to... Heath, he said, El Jefe, back like I never left. Sorry, I was in witness protection. It's cool, though. They got the guy. Question, what position do you see the Steelers drafting higher than most people think? I could see a safety in the third. I will say this. I could see it being a center in the first. A lot of teams do not value the center position in the first round. The Steelers are not that team. If they have a guy that they think is a day one starter, like Marquise Pouncey was in 2010, coming out of Florida, they will take them in the first round. And so if they think it's Jackson Powers Johnson or Zach Frazier or Graham Barton, whatever way they go, they don't have a problem taking a guy in the first round. So in terms of position that is draft or higher than most people think, I think it's center, believe it or not. Uh, next, second question from Heath. Do we need a number two receiver to pair with Pickens or do we need a big name number one have Pickens fill the number two role? I think they do need another weapon. I don't think that in a perfect offense, which I don't think there is a perfect offense, you don't have a genuine bona fide number one. What you have is you have two really good wide receivers. So if they draft a player and it's a second round pick and this guy's ready to play like George Pickens was early in the season in his rookie year, they have the Van Jeffersons, Calvin Austin, the thirds, uh, and even Cordero Patterson can flex out into the slot from time to time. They have options. They have options. So it, it's going to be interesting to see what they do there at wide receiver. Some are suggesting they could even draft one and maybe sign Tyler Boyd to a lesser deal after. I don't know. We will see how that goes. Heath's final question. What are your thoughts on the comparison between Russell Wilson and Watson over the past two seasons? So he screenshots this and sends it to me. So over the last two years, obviously last year, Deshaun Watson barely played. So Russell Wilson has played 30 games to Deshaun Watson's 12 in the last two years. Uh, the quarterback record, Watson's 8-4, and four, Russell Wilson 11-19. and 19. Completion percentage, Wilson is 63.3 to Deshaun Watson's 59.8. 
the yards and yards per attempt are going to be skewed because Russell Wilson played more games. Uh, Russell Wilson has thrown 42 touchdowns to Deshaun Watson's 14 uh, interceptions, 19 to nine, the rating 90.9 for Russell Wilson to 81.7. Again, it looks like a guy that played a lot of snaps and a guy that didn't play a lot of snaps. So it's tough for me to gauge that, but he, thank you for the questions. I really do appreciate it. Let's go to Justin Accord, Jeff, longtime listener of SCN and BTSC. I really like what Tomlin and Khan have done this off season. I cannot wait for this, uh, this season. Am I the only one that thinks Calvin Austin, the third has huge potential was underutilizing Canada's horrible offense, not to mention the terrible quarterback play. Yeah, he's going to have to prove himself durable enough to handle a heavier workload. The size, dude, the guy is just not large. And I know, I remember when Coach KT Smith talked about going to training camp and saying, this guy, if he if he's listed as, at 5'9", that's generous. He's, he's just tiny. And when he goes into the huddle, he disappears. If he goes into the slot, he disappears. How is a any quarterback, let alone Russell Wilson, who's not that tall, going to find him over the middle. They have to find a way to utilize him to his best of his ability. I think he can be more than a gadget, but he's going to have to show it, and they're going to have to trust him. So that's going to be interesting. Let's go to Tom East. Jeff, what has been your favorite con artist move so far this year? Uh, this year, it's got to be the trade for, for Justin Fields. I mean, anytime he is dealing with the Bears, Still not the best move ever. The best move ever was the Chase Claypool trade. I, that will always be my favorite Omar Khan move. Next question. What do you hope to see from him in the draft? Omar Khan, I'm expecting to see some trades. I mean, we talked about this with Roy Countryman on Monday and the, and the Monday morning conversation. And I think it was very obvious that he's, he's on the same wavelength as I am, Roy is, that we're expecting Omar Khan to, to move, move and shake. Move and shake. He's he's going to look at positions of need, and he's going to trade up, maybe trade back to gain more picks. If he has to give up picks to trade up, he's going to try and get those back later. I, that's what I'm expecting. He said, also, hope your family uh, fared okay during the floods back in Wheeling. My brother in Bridgeport was partially cut off from his house near my old football field. Thankfully, uh, where I grew up and where my parents still live is not close to the river. Uh, my mom grew up on the island. And so she talked about flooding all the time when she was a young girl. Uh, and I'm sure that they dealt with a lot of flooding there recently. Thankfully, though, they did not get water. The Big Wheeling Creek did not go over its banks. And so all is good. Thank you for the, the kind words. I do appreciate it. Let's go to Dan Schmidt. Thinking back to one of the last week's episodes where you mentioned a conversation you had with your source, you say your source talked about the team using smoke screens. In the same conversations, he gave you the Steelers center rankings for the draft possible smoke what are your thoughts hey it absolutely could be a smoke screen they could be using us to get word out there and and they could be thinking something totally different it's possible it's absolutely possible um I, in terms of pre-draft visits i explained that last week on last wednesday's show you can go back and check it out but that's a very good point they could absolutely be using us in that vein james m he says jeff now that you're official with Oklahoma Joe's grilling thoughts, spokesperson, what will be the first thing you grill slash smoke with your new grill once you get it? Once I get that new smoker, the one I chose has a vertical chamber, and it also has a side grill with it. Now, the grill, you don't have to use it as a grill. That's where you put in the heat source, and then it goes into the vertical chamber. It has five different racks for racks of ribs. It also has a place where you can hang anything from, like, kielbasa and different types of sausage. Uh, you can smoke those. You can put, I think, upwards of nine chickens, five pork butts, and pork shoulders in there. It's endless. I mean, my gosh, where do I start? I don't know. We'll see. Got to stay tuned. All right, let's go Steeler fan 69 He said, hey, Jeff, if Jesus was around today, what type of car would he drive? A Chrysler. <laughs> now, in case anyone's first-time listener, Steeler fan 69 always brings in the dad jokes, adds a little injection of humor, and we do appreciate it. He continues, my, can, my kids asked me why the food was cold and bland. I said, your mom made it, and she put her heart and soul, S-O-L-E, into it. Next and final, what do you call a whale with no underwear? Free Willie. <laughs> Thank you very much, Steeler fan 69 for the jokes, my kids and my my wife rolls her eyes as expected, uh, but my kids always do get a chuckle out of those when they get them. Let's go to Will Caldwell. Hey, Jeff, a question regarding positional value. It's generally understood that offensive tackle is valued more than center, but if you have two players, say Barton and Mims available, could the Steelers still take the offensive tackle? 
when the alternative center is Mason Cole or Brian Allen. They could. They could. And, and I think that, you know, this is something, again, I hate referencing back to prior podcasts, but Roy Countryman talked about that, how the fifth-year option for a tackle provides more value than at center. People are signing centers for money, but it's not nearly what an offensive tackle makes. So therefore, you would tend to, as an organization, want to lean towards the offensive tackle over the center, especially if you like the centers that are still going to be available the next time around. It's positional value. Everyone views it different. Jeff Kenny said, excluding new free agents and recent acquisitions, which dealer from the current roster do you expect to make the biggest improvement this year? All right, so no no free agents, no recently signed players. Steeler from the current roster to expect to make the biggest improvement. This is, might sound weird. I'm going to go on offense, and I'm going to say Pat Fryermuth. Pat Fryermuth was banged up a lot last year, dealt with hamstring injuries, but Pat Fryermuth also didn't play well when he was healthy, didn't block well. Everything we're hearing from him this offseason, he's working with, I think his uncle was an offensive line coach. He's working with him all the time. On his blocking, I think this offense is going to open him up a little bit. I'm looking for Pat Fryer to have a big year. West Coast N. Hi, Jeff. If you were set, if you were to set the over under regarding the week Justin Fields gets his start, first start with the Steelers, when do you think that would be? How do you see it playing out? If I'm setting the line, I'm setting that line. It was, I'd say I'd like to see the schedule. I would love to see the schedule to see where the bye week is there, but I would go with week. Hmm, Let's go over under, I want to say five and a half, but I'm going to go six and a half. So over under six and a half, I would actually say that that's trending more towards take the over, that it might be later in the year. I just think they're going to give Russell Wilson time unless he really looks bad this off season. All right, let's go to Tyler Clapp. Good morning, Jeff. I was listening to Bad's podcast and he was talking about not divorcing your team. You divorce players. With that being said, in your opinion, who do you view as a player that you were glad to see the team divorce, but maybe were sad to see them go? Oh, man. Divorcing players that the team divorced that I was glad to see them go. Hmm. It was really di- Let me say this. It was really difficult for me to see Antonio Brown leave. Everyone sees Antonio Brown with his psychotic behavior and the way he got out of Oakland at the time and with the Raiders, and then went to the Patriots, and then with the Buccaneers, and running off the field without his shirt and all this stuff. Everyone sees that, but I don't think people that peep Steeler fans remember, but that guy was so good. He was the, the offense for so many years, and it was really tough for me to see him leave. I understood why they did it. I knew why they had to do it. It was tough. Tendercat, I said, he says, I saw your post about the Pirates, a Pirates World Series win or a Steelers Super Bowl win. You'll get no judgment from me if you choose the Pirates. However, I feel like I already know the answer to this question. But then again, maybe not. So uh, the Pirates, boy, they suffered a tough one yesterday. Uh, Two run lead going into the bottom of the ninth. Pitcher gets eight solid innings. They bring in Bednar and he blows his third save of the year. Not good. Not good. Um, If I'm being honest, my first love uh, in sports is baseball. And uh, my first love in terms of teams is the Pirates. And it was the Pirates and the Penguins, <clears throat> excuse me, and in, in, in about the same time, early 90s, they were both very, very good. And then the Steelers were like in 94 when I really started following them. I, I have to be honest, I've seen the Steelers win two, I've seen them play in three, and I'd love to see them get back there. But to see the Pirates win a World Series, something I've never done, I'm going to have to say that. I'm going to have to say that. MDibs24, are there any remaining free agents that you would target for a legitimate role this year? Yeah, there's some. Uh, Justin Simmons is out there. I mean, he could help in the secondary. Uh, Tyler Boyd's still out there. He could help in the wide receiver room. And we talk about the, the centers like Brian Allen. He can help a lot. Yeah, so those three right off the top of my head. Zach Farnsworth, do you think the Steelers not giving out the number one is so the players don't get an inflated ego from the number or because they really have that much respect for the kicker, Gary Anderson. Thanks for the great content. I don't think it has anything to do with Gary Anderson personally. This is not one of those things where it's a, we can't give out that number because he was a legend for the team. Like a number 12 with Terry Bradshaw, 43 for Troy Polamalu, 52 for Mike Webster, 58 for Lambert, 59 for him. You get where I'm going. This is all about, they don't want someone feeling like they are above the team. Giving Patrick Queen six is just a single digit number. They don't, they don't like, they don't view it as like that. Your number one means that you're the number one guy. 
They just don't like doing it. And that's probably something the organization made after Gary Anderson left. It is what it is. I really don't care. Solo Dolo Mays said, Jeff, I've listened to you for years, but this is my first time asking a question. Thank you for the amazing content. What position is an absolute must to address before the draft? I don't know if there is a must right now. I, I don't know that the Steelers are going to sign anyone before the draft. There's times I'm like, okay, I think tomorrow's when we're going to get the news that they're going to sign someone and it never happens. So now I'm at the point where I'm thinking maybe, maybe they're not going to make us a signing. Maybe they're going to roll with what they have and then they'll address other free agents that are still on the market after the draft when the price tag has gone down and they can leverage things a little bit better. I don't know if there is a must. I would love to see him at a center. That would make me feel a lot better. But at the same time, I, I don't know if it's going to happen. All right, let's go with Tendercat again. He said, hey, Jeff, side note here. I bought my first BMW a few weekends ago, and I love it. Turns out my salesman is a Steelers fan as well, so we got to talking about the offseason, amongst other things. I told him about your podcast, so hopefully you have acquired another listener. Thank you for spreading the word. Listen, getting this out to the masses is a grassroots movement. You got to tell your friends, if you have family that are Steeler fans, say, hey, give these guys a listen. You won't regret it. That's how you got to spread the love. All right, Eric uh, Marsh, Marsh, Marsani, I hope I said that. He said, so AB just said Justin Simmons is coming. What a trusted source he is. Have you heard anything from your source about this that gives it any merit? Um, I actually reached out to my source before getting my notes together. He said, hasn't heard anything different than what he's already reported. So nothing in that regard. Doesn't mean it's not going to happen. I'm sure Antonio Brown does actually have his sources. It's just, do you trust Antonio Brown? CTESPN is what he calls it. Good for him. Dr. Anthony, if you could go, if you could only choose one, would you rather bookend the corners with a top pick to go opposite Joey Porter Jr. or bookend the tackles with a top pick to go opposite Broderick Jones? For me, I'm sick and tired of them trying to say that they can manage their way along the offensive line. Get a bookend tackle and dominate the hell out of the trenches. That's what I want. Not that I'd be upset with another solid cornerback, but I feel like you can get one of those in free agency a hell of a lot better, easier than you can an offensive tackle. Last one from Ed Holinsky. What do you make of all the stupid money being handed out this offseason in the form of NFL contracts for free agents? I'll hang up and listen. Thank you, Ed. Um, it, it's some of this money is crazy. I, I always think, you know, I don't, I don't blame the guy, but it, it all started with Christian Kirk. When Christian Kirk left Arizona as a free agent and signed a ridiculous contract with the Jacksonville Jaguars, everyone said, what is going on? And the guaranteed money is out of this world. If you go back just a few years, it was when people were freaking out when Kirk Cousins signed an $80 million fully guaranteed contract with the Minnesota Vikings. Let's ignore the fact that basketball and baseball contracts are all fully guaranteed. The NFL is just starting to catch up in that regard. Please spare me that talk. But still, I look at it I'm like, man, Look at where the contracts have come. These players earn it. They deserve a lot of it. Uh, I don't blame them for taking the money. So when the salary cap goes up the way it did, absolutely, they're going to ask for some more money. The teams can give them some more money. It is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, I, I don't blame a player for taking the money. It's like when people ask me about Live Golf. John Rom was offered $400 million upon signing of guaranteed money. $400 million. Who's going to turn that down? The answer is no one. The answer is no one. So you can blame the owners, the GMs that are making these contract deals. All right, folks, that does it for me. It's been a great show. I do appreciate everyone for sticking around. We will be back on Friday. Jeremy Jerome Betts will be here to talk all things NFL draft and all the Steelers news that might be happening in between now and then. Make sure you check out SteelCurtainNetwork.com, FansFirstSports.com for all your Pittsburgh Steelers needs and your sports needs at Fans First Sports. And Folks, I appreciate you taking uh, part of your day to be with me. I hope you have a great rest of your week. We'll see you on Friday. You know how we finished out. Be safe, be kind, and God bless. Go Steelers.